Hi! Hi. I'm Barb. And I'm Alex. And we're Enchantarium. In today's video, we'll be making Tritanus, the villainous merman from the fifth season of The Winx Club. Our today's victim is Hunter Huntsman from the Ever After High doll series. We always use second-hand dolls and sometimes they are not in the best condition. This one has really loose knee joints, so he's a perfect candidate to be a mermaid. I removed his head using the magic of video editing and now I'm removing his hair. Aaron the Candy Boy was originally also a Hunter Huntsman doll and he was a nightmare to prepare, but this time Hunter was cooperating surprisingly well. We're going to give him a new face, so the old one has to go. I'm using pure acetone to get rid of the factory paint on the face and the scalp. For his hair I'm going to use Fairyland Nylon from Retro Dolls UK. We didn't have a specific idea for the hair, but we knew that we want a center part. Hunter doesn't have parting holes, but I'm going to make them with a needle. I'm using the same rooting technique as always. This is how I made all the part holes. I was too lazy to go to another room for the pair of pliers, so a table and brute force did the job. To secure the hair I'm using a trusty polymer glue. Now it's time for some face modifications. Hunter has a molded brow ridge, which is making his face look friendly and we don't want that. With a Dremel tool and a lot of elbow grease, I sanded his forehead and jaw to make him look more delicate, but at the same time less cheerful. On the right side you can see how much rounder his face is after sanding his jaw. I also altered his lips so they look a little bit bigger and less smiley. I had two failed attempts at making his face, and the main problem was always the brow placement, so this time I'm going to start with brows and add the eyes later. On the male faces, I like to play more with the skin color, so I'm adding a little bit of blue and yellow in the corner of the eyes, under the lips and around the nose. I'm using chalk pastels to add life to the plastic and watercolor pencils to draw the basic features. In the show, his eyes have a really weird color. It's like grey but kinda yellow, I can't tell for sure, so I decided to make them yellow with a hint of purple. When I'm satisfied with the watercolors, I'm moving to acrylics, especially on the whites of the eyes and details like waterline. Arteza, an art supply company, sent us mica powders to try, so I'm going to quickly show you what's in the package. They have really beautiful colors and I'm going to make a swatch board because I'm curious how they look mixed with water. Let's also test if they are similar to Perlex powders. On the left side are Arteza mica powders and on the right side are Perlex powders. On the top I use water and on the bottom I just rub the powder onto the surface with my finger. Besides a difference in colors, they have a similar shine and they both look really pretty to me. There is one big advantage to Arteza mica powders compared to Perlex powders and that's that they are cosmetic grade which means you can safely add them to makeup, body art, nail art, soap art and many more. Tritanus is going to have his face covered with bubble bath pink mica and gold glow mica. I'm also going to try if you can create a cute blush with these powders and you can! Some finishing touches on his eyes and the face is ready. After removing his legs, I went straight to making a pattern for the tail. At first I thought I'd make the fabric sleeve and then stuff it with cotton, 
so I laid out some masking tape to make a sewing pattern for the upper part that connects to the body. It was laying on the body alright, but the missing legs were causing some trouble. I decided to roll bowls of aluminium foil and stick them in the hollow parts to help with that. But it still looked kinda meh. I decided to add some more foil on his butt and change the approach. I added a wire to be the length of the tail that I needed by poking it into the foil structure. I padded his booty with cotton and started wrapping the cotton around the wire too, to form the shape of the tail. I used a generous amount as it would compress. I secured the cotton with strips of fabric and hot glue. Alex helped me to hold him down so I could wrap it tight. Now that I had the right shape, I started draping the outer sleeve on the doll. I recently had a eureka moment when my fabric pens run out. I realized that the friction pens remove with heat, so I started using them to mark stuff on fabric as I can iron it away. Anyway, I marked my seam lines on the pinned fabric and took it apart to sew. I recently got a new sewing machine, which by the way, thank you for watching our videos. I wouldn't be able to afford it without your support. And I just wanted to share how neat it is and threads the needle automatically. Like, how could I live without a needle threader before? Here you can see how the marker gets erased by ironing. I couldn't pull up the tail all the way, so I ripped the front seam at the top, as it will be the easiest spot to sew up by hand at the end. I checked the fit and did some tailoring to make it perfect. I also marked the start positions for the fins that I will add in a second. I also cut the front top part to the right size so we can see that six pack. For the fins, I gathered strips of fabric and I'm going to put them into the back and front seams. I unpicked the parts where I wanted it to go and made sure that the fin is inside as I'm sewing right sides together. I made another ruffle for the front and put it in the same way. It was a bit long, so I had to force it in a bit. That's what it looked like after sewing it in. I realized that I liked the look of it when the ends were also tucked in the seam, so I, yet again, ripped the seams and stitched those flaps in there. My seam ripping rage has decreased lately, so I wasn't too mad about it. Lastly, I trimmed the seam allowances inside the tail to reduce bulk and turned it right sides out. Time for the bottom fin. I cut it out in the fabric twice, sewn along the outer edges, trimmed the seam allowances and turned. Because the seams of the tail were on the back and the front, and not on the sides, I had to cut into the fabric a little bit. I used fray check on those edges. I put the tail on the doll and slid the fin on the wire to attach it to the tail. I used a ladder stitch along the four edges I just cut. It wasn't my best work and, as I had to secure the wire to the fin somehow, I opted out for hiding it with embroidery thread. I just kinda whip stitched around and around the wire till it got encased. The fins need a little trim. And after that's done, I'm going to show you another thing from Arteza. 
3D fabric paints. There's a wide range of colors and textures. Pastel, fluorescent, glow-in-the-dark, glitter, metallic and regular fabric paint. There are additional tips in different sizes, but I'm not going to use them. I made a test painting using jungle green, lime green, gold, silver and white paint. I've never used 3D fabric paints before, so I can't compare them with anything, but they are quite easy to work with. Some time ago Barb sewn a plushy whale and I used these fabric paints to decorate it, henna style. We gave it to our dad for Father's Day, because handmade gifts are the best gifts. In our Riku video we used these paints to create a fade on the scarf and I'm going to do the same for the tail. I made a quick test of colors on the scrap fabric and chose magenta and metallic cherry blossom pink colors to paint the fade. To paint the details, I'm going to make my own tool first. It's a transparent cellophane piece, but you can use any other kind of plastic foil. I'm rolling it into a cone and securing with tape. This is what I use for henna painting, so to me it's the most comfortable way to use these paints. When I made a mistake, I just removed the paint with my nail and watered it down until it disappeared. Time to make his body a little less plastic looking. I'm using chalk pastels to contour and blush and using mica powders to add the same shine as the face has. In our previous mermaid video, we're talking about mermaid nipples. Do they even need them? We're still not sure, but male nipples are more acceptable by YouTube standards, so I decided to draw them. In the show Triton is turned into a monster, and in this form he has some purple tattoos, which I'm going to redesign and extend. To make his accessories, I'm going to use a beer <coughs> a generic beverage can. I cut stripes, circles and the necklace pieces and I'm now painting them yellow. I'm covering them with mica powder and with a gel nail polish. 60 seconds in a UV lamp and repeat the process. All the elements turn out super shiny. In the end, I didn't use the stripes because the metal was not working with any type of glue and I got frustrated. I'm going to use a golden chain instead. Tritanus in both forms has paintings on his forehead. I decided to paint the monster paintings, so you cannot tell me that he looks like Nereus. Tritanus' brother, who has really similar colors to our boy. They are twins, okay? They're supposed to look similar. To finish the sides, I use gloss varnish mixed with mica powder and glitter. The only lockdown skill I learned is braiding my hair a bit, so I'm gonna put that to good use on Tritanus. I actually only know how to do this on myself, but I tried it on one side, then a bit differently on the other side, and rebraided the first one and it looked nice. I used wire instead of elastic to secure the braids, because the small bands tend to break, and I added some rings for a cute accessory. A merman needs a trident, so using a still image from the show, I modeled a trident in Fusion 360, roughly following the shape 
and 3D printed it in purple filament. Let's paint the 3D printed trident with golden paint. I'm using the same technique with mica powder and gel polish as for the accessories. After two coats of mica and gel, it looks like this. I added some shadow and light reflections of camera. Now it's time for hot glue action. I'm going to glue a lot of decorations to the weapon and the tail and after that the doll will be finished. This is how he turned out. I'm really happy with how the tail came out this time. If you've seen our Noreen video, you would know how I was complaining about the lack of posability on that doll, so I'm glad I managed to remedy that with this guy. Thanks to Urteza for sending us products to try again. We really enjoy their products and they did not pay us to say that. If you'd like to get some yourself, Arteza was kind enough to forward a 10% off coupon code ENGINTERIUM3, valid until August 26th. You can find more details and links of the products we use, as well as general affiliate link in the description. Buying through our affiliate links comes at no extra cost to you and helps to support our channel. Thanks! Do you have any favorite villains? Let us know in the comments down below! Our favorites are Iowar Thon from The Flash, Kira Yoshikage from Jojo Part 4, and Kevin from The Good Place. Make sure to follow us on Instagram for some sneak peeks and subscribe for future videos. Have an enchanted day and we'll see you next time. Bye! Gold, silver and white paint. <laughs> Why paint? Why? 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 Why?